Hi guys, Nate here with another data science interview question. Today's question comes from Microsoft. It's gonna be covering rankings and window functions. I'm gonna walk through the question like I'm on an interview. I'll give you guys some tips on how to approach the solution, as well as some tips on how to communicate effectively with your interviewer. So let's get started, but before that, if you like content like this, please subscribe to this channel. Thanks. All right, so this question is from Microsoft. It's called Bottom Two Companies by Mobile Usage. It's a medium level question. The question reads, write a query that returns a list of the bottom two companies by mobile usage. Mobile usage is defined as the number of events registered on a mobile client ID. Order the result by the number of events ascending. In the case where there are multiple companies tied for the bottom ranks, rank one or two, return all the companies. So I like to approach every problem in the exact same way. Whether or not I'm on an interview or on the job, I want a very systematic way of solving each and every problem. This makes my life easier because when I'm on an interview, I'm not too stressed out, I'm not overthinking. Um, I can just rely on the framework that I've developed to really guide me through the interview process. So the framework has three parts. The first part is to understand your data. What I wanna do is understand the values in the data set as well as understand the column headers and what they mean. The second step is to write my approach down and get that validated by the interviewer. So what I wanna do before I even start coding is just write down exactly what I'm gonna to do to solve the problem, get that validated by the interviewer so that I know that all of my assumptions, all my edge cases, and all the functions I wanna use are correct. And the interviewer validates that it's correct. And the last step is to code my solution, and I typically will code exactly in the steps that I've outlined in step two. That makes things a lot easier to follow and it also builds from the ground up so that you're not trying to code the entire solution all at once because there's a lot of mistakes that can happen when you do that. So these are the three simple approaches that I'm gonna be taking you on in this video. And then the last step, we'll talk about code optimization. All right, so let's get started. So let's first understand what the column headers are. So we have a table called fact events. So there are roughly seven columns here. And typically on interviews, you're not gonna be able to see the underlying data. So the first step is to look at the column headers to see whether or not you understand what they actually mean. The column headers are typically named so that it's pretty obvious exactly what it means. So, you know, for example, customer ID is some sort of customer or user ID identifier that identifies the customer, right? That's very obvious. Same with user ID and time ID. Um, what maybe not obvious is client ID, event type, uh, event ID. Uh, let's see if we can understand what these columns mean or if these columns are useful from the problem statement itself. So when I read the problem again, we need to understand companies and mobile usage. And there's the definition of mobile usage in the second sentence of the problem statement. So mobile usage is defined as the number of events registered on a mobile client ID. So at this point, I know that client ID here is important. This column is important to answer the question. So I would ask the interviewer, um, what value am I looking for in the client ID to single out mobile usage? And the interviewer might say that we wanna look for text that actually says mobile, right? Simple enough. And so the second thing I need to know is how to identify companies. It's not really obvious with the column headers here which column header represents companies. So I would ask the interviewer what that, uh, what that column ID actually is. In this case, it will be customer ID. Now the great thing about this platform is we actually can preview the data so we can actually validate if our assumptions are correct since we don't have an interviewer right next to us. So the first thing I want to validate is the client ID. I see desktop and I see mobile. And obviously we want to find the bottom two companies by mobile usage. And so this is exactly the right column for that and we're gonna be using um, and singling out rows with the mobile text here. 
And the second thing to validate is how to identify companies and customer ID again is how you do that. And you can see the company's names here. So now with an understanding of the data set, knowing that we're gonna be using customer ID and client ID in our solution, we can start with the second part of the framework, which is to formulate our approach and write out our solution before we start to code. This is when we start thinking about how we wanna manipulate the data and what functions we want to use to answer this question. So I'm gonna just write it out as comments in this uh, editor here. The first step in my approach is to filter the data on the client ID column so that we're only looking at mobile usage, right? We're gonna isolate the text mobile to just keep the rows where we're, we have mobile usage. So that's simple enough. The second step is to count the number of events for mobile usage. So we're really just counting the number of rows here, right? Um, because that represents um, just an event, uh, a mobile event or mobile usage. So now that we've filtered on mobile usage, we've counted the number of mobile events, we need to start ranking by the amount of events per company. So this is the test for this problem here. Can you rank, right? And so what we wanna do is use some sort of ranking function. And this is um, your chance now to talk to the interviewer to talk about the different types of ranking functions that we could use. We could use row number, we could use rank, we can use dense rank. Um, and this is a conversation with the interviewer to show them um, your knowledge of all of these ranking functions and the nuances behind them. So I'm going to be covering those three ranking functions when I start coding. And the last step, because we are only interested in the bottom two ranks, so rank one and rank two, we need a way to then grab those ranks once we've actually found all of the rankings. So step one, two, and three are actually gonna be either in a subquery or in the CTE, and then we're gonna create another query, I'm gonna call it an outer query, where we're gonna grab the bottom two ranks. And that should actually be it. Once these steps are validated by your interviewer and validated by yourself, of course, you can actually start coding. So let's get started with that. Okay, so the first part is to filter the client ID by mobile usage. And just like before, when we previewed the, the table, we saw that client ID basically had two values, desktop and mobile. We just wanna keep the rows that have mobile. So that's actually fairly easy. We just need a where clause that says client ID equals mobile. And if we run the code here, every single row should now actually just have the mobile value here. All right, so this is mobile usage in the facts table. So the second step now is to count the number of events for mobile usage. This is also relatively easy. So we can have something like count star, which will count all of the rows because we are isolating mobile from the client ID here. We know that every row will have the value mobile. So it's valid for us to use this asterisk here because it's just going to count all of the rows. And we know that all of the rows have the value mobile. The only reason for us to maybe put client ID here is that if we, if we think that there might be um, nulls in those rows and we don't want them in our count, then we want to put the client ID uh, or the column header there. Right, but in this case, client ID will work, um, but also an asterisk here where we're counting all both nulls and non-nulls in the rows will also work as well. Right, so we, we basically just get a number if we run this uh, query here, which is not exactly what we want because we're trying to identify companies by their mobile usage. So the column header that represents the company is the customer ID and that's what we need to do and maybe what I'll also do is um, name the count uh, column as events and then add a group by customer ID and then if I run this I should get the number of mobile events by customer and I see that right here all right so step one and two are done uh, that was the easy part. The hard part is now the ranking part. So the question is, what ranking function should I actually use? And as you see here, there are three ranking functions. There's row number, there's rank, and there's dense rank. And depending on the data and depending on what this question is implying, I, I need to choose the correct one. So let's go back to the question real quick. The last sentence in the problem statement will tell you what ranking function to use. 
in the case where there are multiple companies tied for the bottom ranks, one or two, return all the companies. So what you're trying to do is identify the bottom two companies by mobile usage. Uh, so what you're actually trying to do when you're ranking the companies is get the first and second rank. Those are, if you sort them by least to most events, the rank one and the rank two will be the bottom two companies with the least amount of events. Like there are two companies with 10 events, right? That's, that's a tie. And depending on what ranking function you use, those ties will be handled differently when you go to the second rank. And so now let me illustrate this uh, with some examples so it actually makes sense. Okay, so this is an example of an output using row number. As you see, row number is a row rank. And even if there are ties here, uh, so we are trying to rank by power. So even if there are ties here in the power column, row rank doesn't actually consider them ties. It would just go in consecutive order, one, two, three, all the way to the end of the, the number of rows. So that's just the behavior of the row number function. So we need to ask ourselves, is that exactly what we want to implement? The answer is no, because we're trying to find the bottom two companies by ranking. And so if there's, for whatever reason, five companies that rank for the bottom, we wanna be able to return all five and then also return the second rank. So let's take a look at the rank function. So this is an implementation of the rank function here. We have rank ID and then we are ranking by employee name. And you can see these uh, three rows here, a tool, the rank function gives a the tool value the exact same rank. There is a tie in rank number one for the employee name, a tool. And then the next rank jumps from one to four because there's a three-way tie. So one, two, and three, and then the next ranking will be uh, rank number four. So do we want to use ranking for this problem? The answer again is no, because we're trying to find the bottom two companies in ranking. So if there are ties in rank number one, we don't actually know what the second rank is actually going to be. Is it going to be a two? Is it going to be a five? Is it going to be a 10? It really depends on the data set, right? And because we don't know what the data set actually um, has, we don't know how many ties there are or if there are any ties. So it wouldn't really be helpful to use the ranking function. So that would leave us with a dense rank. So this is an implementation of dense rank here. So there's a three-way tie in the exact same uh, column, uh, employee name. And then you see what the next rank is actually rank number two. So it doesn't skip even though there's a three-way tie. So this is exactly what we need. We wanna identify the bottom two companies by ranking. So that's rank one and rank two. And dense rank will always have rank one and rank two no matter how many ties there are in the events. So we're gonna be using dense rank in our implementation and all of the nuances I just explained in an interview I would explain that to the interviewer so they understand that I'm not just randomly picking a ranking function. I know exactly what these ranking functions do and the nuances behind it and how to actually apply it to the problem I'm trying to solve. All right, so now that we know what ranking function we're gonna use, let's implement that here. So we're gonna be implementing dense rank here and creating a window function over order by the count so the count represents the number of events that we have, just like in the second row here. Um, and so that's gonna give us uh, the ranking. So let's just take a look at the output once we implement the window function and dense rank. So what we see here are the companies, the number of events by mobile usage, and then the ranking. And the order of the ranking is actually ascending by default because you see that the lower, the lowest number of events are at the top and the highest number of events are at the bottom. So we have this tie in events here. Um, these are ranked one, and then rank two is um, send it with seven events, right? And so we're, what we're interested in is actually outputting these three rows here because they're giving us the bottom two companies by mobile usage. Now there are three companies, right? And I just said bottom two companies by mobile usage, but we didn't know before we started that there would be ties in events. 
So what we really wanted to do, if you go back to the question, is that we want to return rank one and two because the, the last sentence in this problem statement says, in the case where there are multiple companies tied for the bottom ranks, rank one or two, return all of the companies. So that tells us that we're really only interested in the bottom ranks, rank one and rank two, and there are three companies in those ranks. So let's now write the code that will give us um, these three companies or rank one and two. So in order to do that, this is going to be a subquery right here. And I'm gonna write another query that will basically just pick out rank one and two. Okay, so again, this is the subquery right here. We have this outer query where we have um, the ranks uh, one or two. And in the output, I have customer ID as well as events, which come from the subquery, customer ID and account of the events. And then I'm just gonna order by events. So if I run this code, what I have are the three companies that I was talking about and uh, the number of events that they have. So now let's check our solution to see if we got it correct. And our solution is correct. The one other question that might get asked in your interview is whether or not uh, this code can be optimized, right? So what the interviewer is really asking for or trying to test you for is whether or not you know um, SQL theory uh, to be able to make your queries faster because oftentimes when you're working at these companies with large data sets, how you write the query really matters in terms of execution time, in terms of resources used. You wanna make your queries uh, run fast as possible and you wanna take up as little resources as possible. And I'm talking about you know execution time, CPU time, but also memory used, RAM used, all of that, right? So if I take a look at this query, I don't see any, any you know, obvious ways to actually optimize the code. I have a subquery here, it's using a ranking function. Um, that's kind of like what I need to do. The only other thing I could do is use a CTE instead of a subquery. You know, depending on um, my use case, a CTE could be nice because I can write other pieces of code there and use the CTE in that, in that code. I could create a temporary table, I can create a permanent table, and I can reuse the, these ranks here so I don't have to run the subquery each and every time for other problems I'm trying to solve, right? So that would be the reason to use either a CTE, a temporary table, or a permanent table. But in terms of execution time and optimization, I can't really uh, make this code run in any faster. I need the subquery here and I need an outer query to basically find all of the rankings and then pick out rank one and two. I need two queries to do that. But the point is, if you say all of that and you talk about the differences between a subquery, a CTE, temporary tables, permanent tables, and why and when you would use them, you've basically validated to the interviewer that you know SQL theory and that if you do deal and work with large data sets, you will be able to write code that executes quickly and be conscious about execution time as well as resources used. All right, that's it for this problem. This was a medium level problem that really tests your ability to rank the data and in particular use the correct ranking function. So this is almost always tested on interviews. It's used almost daily um, as a data scientist or a data analyst. Uh, so knowing the rankings and, and so knowing which ranking function to use and how to implement it is very important to your day job. All right, that's it for me. If you guys like this type of content, I'll continue to create it. Uh, please take a look at my playlist for other data science interview questions. Please subscribe to this channel so you can be alerted for upcoming future video content like this. All right, thank you guys.